traditional because no gospel recorded them all. It is uncertain in which order they really came, also unknown in whether Jesus said other things on the cross or whether the seven sayings are summaries of longer statements, but consider the trauma of crucifixion, it would not be surprising if this were all he said. Now, the crucifixion started at 9 a.m. in the morning. He was crucified. From 12 o'clock until 3 is when the darkness took place. And where the sayings, no doubt, happened. What was the first saying there, Prophetess Kelly? Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they do. And so, Prophet Steve Bostic begins to cover this point. But I want to say here that when we begin to look at Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Jesus shows more concern for others than he does for himself. Yes. Say it with me, what a wonderful Savior. What a wonderful Savior. He showed more for others than the nails that was put in his wrist. Yes. So look at your neighbor and say, what a wonderful Savior. What a wonderful Savior. He showed more concern for the other than the nails that was in his feet. Say, what a wonderful Savior. What a so we begin to see here that Jesus begins to show this, Father, forgive them. And that Father, forgive them was not the end of that statement, but we begin to see that it's picked up even further and moved on with the martyr, Jan uh, with the martyr Stephen, that Stephen begins to say and take the same line in another way when they started to stone him. Yes. Lord, don't even leave this to their charge. Father, forgive them. Now, Father, tell me what was the second one. Truly, I say to you today, you will be with me in paradise. You see, Prophet Kelly covered that Jesus Christ made a promise. And when we look at the distinction, and we look at the distinctions here, the first one, he creates a clearing. Jesus is completing a past. You cannot come to a promised land with hangovers of blaming others for the state that you're in. Touch your name and say, completing the past. Completing the past. Then he says, today, you will be with me in paradise. Touch your name and say, a promise for the future. A promise for the future. And so when we begin to look here at this promise for the future. Luke does not record this statement to teach about the abode of the dead, but to express the response of God in faith. You see, one criminal, see, there was one space, but two different conversations. There was a conversation of the past, and then there was a conversation of the future. Jesus did not really have a conversation to really answer what was his past or what the past thief was talking about. But he lived into creating the conversation of the possibility of a better future. One criminal might understandably join with the jeering crowd, gets only silence from Jesus. We notice that in Luke 23, verse 40. Can you read that for me there? In the Gospel of Luke, chapter 23, verse 40. But the other quite remarkably recognized not only the innocence of Jesus, but also that the cross was only a prelude to the crown. Amen. But the, but the other answering rebuked him, saying, Dost not thou fear God, seeing thou art in the same condemnation? condemnation? And we indeed justly, for we receive the due reward of our deeds. But this man has done nothing amiss. And he said unto Jesus, Lord, remember me when thou comest into thy kingdom. Wow. Wow. One is with the crowd working from a pass. The other is in the possibility called future. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor. neighbor. Are you in my past? Are you in my past? Or are you living into a future? Are you living into a future? Then Prophet Marcus Sullivan began yes. to cover. Woman, 
Behold your son. Behold your mother. Mm -hmm. Now Jesus already cared for both enemies and new converts. Mm -hmm. Say with me, oh how I love Jesus. Oh how I love Jesus. Look at somebody else and say, oh how I love Jesus. Oh how I love Jesus. And here we begin to see that now he turns to set his own house in order. I want to just take a moment here just to begin to reflect, possibly, of the picture that's going on. How is it that your brother's funeral is happening, but your siblings are not there? Jesus. Mm. How is it that Jesus had other brothers and sisters? Mother was there. We don't know what happened to Joseph. Some said maybe he had passed by then. Mm. But Mary was there, but none of your other brothers and sisters are there. Wow. You know, oftentimes when you are doing the will of the Father, your family will not be there. Right. Because spirit becomes thicker than blood. Yes. We die daily in the things of God. Some of you look around, you can't find your sisters or your brother. Or some of you can't even find your mother. And maybe this is what Jesus was saying when he says, who is my sister? Who is my brother? And who is my mother? But they that do the what? The will of my father. So if you're not doing the will of the father, we're not related. Come on. We might be Family, but not in relationship. We don't relate. Why? Because we both have two different conversations. You are only in relationship with conversations you can relate with. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor. You are only in conversations. That you are in relationship with. So here, Jesus had to now set his house in order. John pictures Jesus as fully in control of the situation because John is the only one that seemingly covers this here with this mother and, and, and woman, behold your son, behold your mother. So John is picking this up, he is in total control. He calmly cares for his mother instead of focusing on his suffering. Mary was also suffering as the sword was no doubt pierced in her heart. And Jesus now, much more her Lord than her son. Remember, his natural as well as his spiritual relationship. It is also, it is not known why Jesus' brothers and sisters were not around to care for Mary. You would have thought that if they had a problem with their brother, yes. perhaps they would be there to care for their mother. That's right. That's right. That's right. Jesus. We don't know. Maybe they got held up at the gate trying to get in. Maybe it was one of those ceremonies where they only allowed maybe two relatives in at a time. But whatever the story may have been, Jesus wanted to make sure his mother was taken care of. So as Prophet Marcus began to bring it out, John. Behold, your mother. Showing that relationship is more spiritual in relationship because blood don't connect us, but spirit do. Yes. Amen. That's good. No doubt, with a little history here, John was a native of Judea, not a Galilean. So he also owned a 